Hi everyone, this is Bill Stearns, NE4RD, and I'm the co-host of the Linux in the Ham Shack podcast. You can find us at lhspodcast.info. This is part one in a multi-part series of YouTube videos that I'm going to do to show you how to get your Shack computer ham radio ready. And in my case, it's going to be my Ubuntu Linux installation. And I am running currently Ubuntu 17.04. Uh, this is uh, not an LTS release. And in fact, probably during this series, I'm going to upgrade to 17.10. Uh, I'm using the uh, Budgie Dex desktop and uh, I like it. I like Plank over here. This is the dock for uh, for the icons. And it's it's quite a lightweight um, UI and I, I really like it. I've, I, I liked it because I like Solus, uh, like using Solus a lot. So, but uh, I, I, I needed some of the applications that are easier to install for Linux. <laughs> and I really wanted this box to kind of show you, uh, show you how to get started the easy way. And um, as you can see, this is a, this is a, a Dell Precision laptop. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. So it's, it's a little, little overpowered for being a, a shack computer, but uh, we're gonna use it, we're gonna use it anyway. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is, in this first video, we're gonna do an installation of uh, software for all the uh, ham radio applications, you know, just a good baseline of ham radio applications. So we're gonna start with uh, installing the uh, ham radio pure blend packages, which are uh, available in, in, in all these meta packages like a ham radio antenna, data modes, digital voice, logging, Morse, non-amateur packet modes, ham radio rig control, satellite, SDR, tools and training, if you if you install all these packages, it gives you a, a, a plethora of applications, and we talk about this on the show all the time. Um, this is the easiest way to get a bunch of software installed on your computer, and you can try it out and see what works for you and which applications you like. In addition to this, I'm going to install the uh, PPA archives for uh, for a CQR log. Okay, so let's go over real quick what a PPA is. It, it definitely allows you to add software to your system, but uh, let me give you the official definition here. A PPA is a personal package archive, and it allows you, you can distribute software and updates directly into uh, you know, an Ubuntu system or an Ubuntu user's computer. Uh, it, they're, they have like a bad rap and a good rap. Uh, the good rap is that if you, if you only attach PPAs of known vendors, like I'm going to attach one for CQR log and for uh, WSJTX. And, and, you know, if you don't get too wild and crazy with them, you, you won't kill your system. Uh, the concern here is if you add a PPA that includes some, uh, some important libraries in your system and the PPA updates it, uh, it's possible that you could, uh, you know, you could uh, break your system. Uh, so <laughs> uh, be wary on ad adding just PPAs at random just to have the latest, greatest software, you know, cause sometimes the mainline repos won't give you the, the particular version you want. Um, at least for my purposes, the ham radio software for CQR log, you know, there are some needed fixes and stuff like that, that occur in these, uh, the latest versions. Now, you know, I could, uh, like I said, bypass the whole apt repository or the PPA completely and just download the Debs as, uh, as they come out. Uh, and, uh, you know, use GDB or whatever to install it. Uh, however, I find it just much easier just to go ahead and add the PPA because I, I trust these particular, uh, <laughs> particular sites, uh, you know, within reason. Um, you know, if they're ever, if they're ever uh, taken over or corrupted or compromised, then yeah, you, you could possibly get some software in there that could affect your system. But, uh, these would be, uh, uh pretty uh pretty obscure targets for most people to hit but anyway um so i'm gonna go ahead and install the ppas for uh you know cqr log wsjtx um everybody loves wsjtx that's your jt8 modes your jt65 and uh, everything else for uh, doing uh uh the newer modern digital stuff and of course uh, i'm gonna pop in the uh one for uh fl digi as well um because uh i'll be uh showing you how to get that uh, FL Digi2 remote from uh, CQR log once we get everything going. So uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can just cut and paste right from the the website here. You go, you know, cut and paste that. 
into your browser or into your uh into your uh terminal and of course the terminal setup so it'll warn you that hey you're pasting a, a sudo command you know this is a command that escalates privileges um and there, there has been some hacks known to be uh in there if you if you don't have this feature on it uh you could blindly uh, execute some stuff, maybe in some micro fonts that you don't read right away. <clears throat> so <laughs> uh, it's best to leave the warning on here so you can actually see what's going to occur on your system. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. We'll uh, get the password typed in. And we'll go ahead and add this PPA. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all the PPAs first. So, because I'm not going to install the software one by one. So this is the WSJTX one here. And I'm do that. And paste that there. This one has the TAC Y in it. So that's basically just skips the whole pressing enter to continue. Um, no big deal there. And we're going to grab the one here as well for... Um, for a CQR log. So now that we have those installed, we're just going to run an apt update to go ahead and uh, add those to our repository here. Oh, sorry. Sudo apt update. Hey, I, even I make mistakes. <laughs> So this will go ahead and uh, update everything. And we can also make sure that our PPAs are in here. You can see that they all got pulled. And you can see I have a, I have a couple others in there. I got some G Potter and stuff like that. So there's already stuff here that can be updated. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at what that is. Sudo apt upgrade. Uh, just looks like some security stuff. We're just going to run that real quick. So get that out of the way. And I'm not speeding any of this up, so this is about how the system runs. I am running on a uh, on an SSD on this box. This is a uh, running a uh, Samsung, um, I believe it's an 840 um, M2 SSD. It's a smaller one. Um, uh, yeah, so it's a it's a much smaller one. It's like a 256 megabyte or gigabyte uh, unit. Um, I'm already using half of it. <laughs> I do have a, a hard drive in here. I'm going to move my home, my home user, user home, sorry, uh, to. Uh, so I, I just keep all the downloaded stuff on a regular hard drive because I don't really need speed on that and just keep the OS running fast. A um, couple of things you can look at with your system too. If you if you want to want to see, uh, um, see how fast like your system boots and stuff like that, you can run system deanalyze just to kind of get a speed of everything you can see my system boots up kernel boots up in 3.5 seconds and then user space boots up in about uh, 10 seconds so the whole thing comes up in 13 seconds which is which is not too bad and you can run blame as well and this gives you individual components so you can see how fast individual components are coming up which uh yeah isn't too bad yeah so it's this is a pretty decent box <coughs> So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, the Ham Radio Pure Blend packages first, um, and this actually includes some of these other ones, like CQR log, like WSJTX, I believe is in there now. We'll see what it it installs when we get it there. So the easiest way to install this, um, and if you notice, they, they still have the old app get install. You don't need to do that anymore. Um, you can just do an apt install. And that, in fact, I think that's the recommended, recommended way, recommended way. I can't even speak tonight. Ham radio. And uh, as you can see here, there's a, uh, there they all are. I'm just hitting tab on my, uh, on my keyboard. And that should try to auto complete it. Now we can type in each one of these, you know, like antenna and, uh, you know, ham radio, data modes or whatever. But I believe you can just simply put in a wild card and then press enter and it's going to go ahead and pop them all in so it makes it real easy for you to just go ahead and uh, install them all and uh, it's going to show you the list of packages to install and obviously 
there's a lot of them because <laughs> uh, this installs a lot of tools. So, uh, yeah, this looks like, yeah, see, so here's WSJTX is in there. Uh, some other loggers, Xlog is in there. Tuknock, uh, Trusted SQ, or Trusted QSL. So that's going to be good for when we uh, hook up to Logbook of the World. And, uh, geez, a bunch of other stuff. So let's go ahead and hit yes. And we'll let this download. I may speed this part up, depending upon uh, how long this takes. Okay, now that it's done downloading, we're going to have to have a few extra things here to uh, configure. And uh, this particular one is uh, pretty common. <laughs> it's uh, wanting to add uh, your user to uh, the privilege group for uh, making connections here. Um, so we should definitely say yes on this. So non-super users be able to active, uh, activate native uh, and use native uh, AX25 interfaces. So we're going to say yes. And let's just scroll up because I saw a warning there. Uh, stat override. Okay. No big deal. Yeah, everything looks good like it installed. And uh, we can just go ahead and test a couple of quick applications just to see kind of what we got here. We should have a new menu option for ham radio in which it tries to uh, put most of the software and stuff like that in there. See, we got a good swath of stuff here to take a look at. Um... Oh uh, yeah, looks like uh, everything installed fine. Here's Quisk. This is an SDR application. Uh, of course, GNOME Predict here. That's a uh, satellite tracking. Got some satellites. See if we can update our TLE from network. So these are just some of the applications that come with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over not all of the applications, but some of the ones that I use and uh, some of the ones that I think you'll want to use. Uh, like here's WSJTX. Let's see if that pops up here too. There it is. And this is W, let's see, 1.80 RC2. So it is the latest version. So very good. Um, I don't have the rig control set up yet. And I want to drive it through CQR log. So that'll be our next step is setting up CQR log, importing my, uh, my ADIF from my uh, last logger and getting that all configured and working with uh, WSJTX, the rig, and FL Digi. So for now, this is uh, the basic install for the shack box. We have a bunch of radio, amateur radio applications installed. And we're just going to build from here. So it's easy to do if you have a you know, basic installation of Ubuntu. Um, doesn't matter what flavor. This stuff should all work very easily with the uh, Ham Radio Pure Blend packages. And if you use those uh, personal package archives, like I suggested, you'll have the latest versions of CQR log, WSJTX, and FL Digi, which is uh, which is really important to have those 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 current versions because it has all the new modes and uh, the logs and and everything else. So I mean, you, you gotta kind of have that stuff. So, anyways, this is Bill Stearns, NE4RD from Linux in the Ham Shack, and we will see you next time.